We're going to be palpating the radius. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is placing the person uh, in this position. So we have a 90 degree bend going on in the, the elbow and I've put this person's hand into a pronated position, which kind of puts the radius on top, but then it's going to start heading towards the body as it goes towards the thumb. So we're going to be starting by landmarking on the humerus a little bit. The first thing I'm going to be looking for is the lateral supracondylar ridge and then the lateral epicondyle here. So once I've identified the lateral epicondyle, you could do a really easy, quick, ask your partner to rapidly tap their fingers and I can feel digitorum. Good, thank you. And what I want to do is travel distal in kind of the direction of the thumb. So as I'm on that lateral epicondyle, I'm just rolling off of it. And this is actually the joint line between the humerus and the radius. Now the radius actually articulates with the capitulum of the humerus, but we're not going to be able to palpate that. But just past that part of the humerus is the head of the radius. So the head is quite an easy object to feel from this position. But if you looked at the form in an anatomical position, you'd be going through a lot of musculature and it's going to be a lot more challenging for you to sink and locate it. So again, I'm going to go back to our original start position here. Lateral epicondyle, just distal to that. Here's our joint line, and this is the head of the radius. This can cause a little bit of discomfort with your person, um, so just take caution with it, but I'm gonna move this wad of three muscle group down out of the way as I'm kind of pushing it, using my thumb on one side of the head and my index finger on the other. And then I'm gonna hold on to their hand and just start to supinate and pronate and you'll actually feel the head of the radius rotating or spinning in between your fingers. So kind of picture I'm grabbing onto the head and then as I turn through supination pronation, this is what's happening underneath the surface. So you can feel the supination pronation movement of this proximal kind of radius and the radial ulnar joint. Okay, so there's the head of the radius. Just past that's gonna be a neck that's not gonna be easily identifiable. Um, so we're then going to look for what is known as the radial tuberosity. I'm going to take the arm and I'm actually going to place it more of a palm up position. And the radial tuberosity is going to be the insertion of biceps brachii. This is not going to be an easily identifiable landmark. It is quite deep on the anterior medial surface of the radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this biceps tendon to try to get myself down orienting in the right spot. Again, the radius is lateral and the ulna is medial. So I'm gonna passively lift the elbow up in deflection. Can you just do a gentle bicep curl, bring your palm towards your head, good. And right in here is that biceps tendon and now completely relax for me. And I'm going to drop in to the center of the forearm. Again, passively bringing us up a little bit further. A little bit of a bicep curl again. Good, and there's the biceps tendon. And now I'm gonna use supination and pronation to feel the radial tuberosity and that biceps tendon moving back and forth. One more time doing a little bit of a biceps, perfect. And this is gonna be as close as I'm gonna to get to being on that radial tuberosity right in this area. Okay, the next bony landmark we're gonna look for is another tubercle, um, but it's for a different muscle known as pronator teres. So this one is approximately halfway down the lateral surface. So I have the thumb facing up at the moment, proximal part here, distal part there. So we're looking in the middle. But the other thing that we can do is try to find and identify the muscle known as pronator teres and follow it towards this landmark. I'm gonna bring your elbow a little bit closer to you. I'm gonna put you in a neutral position and I'm gonna ask for you to gently push into my thumb here on your radius, good. A little bit less than that, just gently push, perfect. So this right here is pronator teres, and I'm gonna follow the muscle belly of pronator teres, distal and lateral, until I get to the radius. Now completely relax for me. I'm gonna try to soften up that pronator teres, and this is a slightly raised area on the radius. You won't feel a lot of bump, but again, if you start to activate that muscle, perfect. I can feel pronator teres activate as it inserts into this pronator tubercle here. So not a lot to feel, but just more of a landmarking location. Okay, we're gonna work our way 
distal now along this radius. I've still left it in a neutral position. So as I approach the distal end of the radius, um, it ends in what is known as the styloid process, which is a sharper projection. So I wanna feel where the radius drops off. So right here, as I go over the edge, I'll drop off the radius into the carpal bones, and that last part of the radius is known as a styloid process. So a couple things I can do to try and help prove that. Uh, if I hold the radius and ulna st still, but I use ulnar and radial deviation, that would only be occurring through the carpal bones. So if I'm feeling the last part of the radius, if you look very carefully, my index finger is not moving as I'm on that styloid process. Or if I went a little bit distal into the carpals, there's actually gonna be quite a bit of up and down squish in around my finger. So the last part of bone. Uh, this is not a muscular attachment per se, as it is more a ligamentous stability on that lateral aspect of the wrist. We do have the muscle known as brachioradialis attaching near that styloid, but not directly on its tip. So it's usually saying more at the base of it, right in this location. So styloid process of the radius. I'm gonna be turning palm down and I'm gonna go from that styloid, which we know is at the distal part of the radius, and I'm gonna move on to the posterior aspect. As I work my way posterior <clears throat> and towards the fifth finger, which is technically medial anatomically, but it looks like I'm moving lateral just the way the hand is facing, I'm gonna come across a quite large raised bump in comparison to everything else on this posterior surface. And this is known as the dorsal tubercle of the radius. And in older references, it's known as Lister's tubercle. So Lister's tubercle is again, a quite a pronounced bump on the posterior distal radius. So this barring radius over here being ulna, um, and you can quite easily kind of strum back and forth across it. It is not a muscular attachment, but it actually helps form a separation between different tendons. So as I ask my person to rapidly tap all of their fingers, I'm going to feel digitorum going on one side of it. But if I ask you to extend your thumb and lift it up and down, I'm going to be able to feel some of the pollicis muscles moving on either side. So it helps create separation between those tendons so they're not rubbing as much together. So that is again, the dorsal tubercle of the radius. <clears throat> and just pointing out at the distal end of the radius, we have radius and we have ulna. Again, it's not gonna be easy for me to feel, um, but deep down inside there is our distal radial ulnar joint. And we're gonna have the radius articulating with our scaphoid here and our lunate a little bit more lateral than that. And we'll talk about carpals in another video. So that is me going through all of the bony landmarks from proximal to distal of our radius.